Public key cryptography relies on hard math problems. For example, RSA uses prime factorization, and Diffie-Hellman uses the discrete log problem. But if a large enough quantum computer were ever built, it could easily solve these problems and thus break the associated cryptography. To build new quantum resistant forms of cryptography, we need to use math problems which are hard even for a quantum computer. And one very good candidate is the learning with errors problem. First, let's talk about learning without errors. Alice has a secret vector, a list of numbers. That's what's known as her private key. Her public key, the information that she shares with others, has a slightly odd looking format at first. It's a bunch of equations like this. When we plug in the secret numbers, letting x equal 10, y equal 82, z equal 50, and w equal 5, then the equations are all true. In other words, the secret vector is a solution to each of these equations. Of course, the secret vector is only a secret if you can't easily figure it out. It should hopefully take a computer a very, very long time to discover the secret vector using just the public equations. And in the learning without error system we've just set up, that's not true. Focusing on the first four lines, these form a system of linear equations, four equations and four variables. We can solve this pretty easily by manipulating the equations or by using a matrix and the very convenient tools of linear algebra. Regardless, a computer can quite quickly solve for the secret vector using just four of the public equations. That's not going to work. It's not really a secret. But we can slightly modify the public information to make it much, much more challenging to deduce the secret information by incorporating the errors in learning with errors. I'm going to pick random whole numbers that are pretty close to zero and add them to the right side of each equation. These numbers are the red errors, and they're also secret. Let's combine the correct answer and the errors. Now, these equations are the public information. You may remember how to separate the right side back into the correct answer and the error, but that's only because you just saw where they came from. If you only had access to the public information, you wouldn't know how to pull apart the real system of linear equations. This error-filled system of linear equations almost certainly doesn't have a solution. It has more equations than variables. Sometimes this is called an overdetermined system. And this type of system usually doesn't have a solution. There are simply too many equations constraining the values of the variables. The previous equations, the ones without the errors, were very special. Our equations were created from a solution. We went backward. So of course it had a solution, but that doesn't usually happen. We can manipulate the error-filled equations to get values for the variables which are close to the truth, but it would take a long time and a lot of equations to figure out the real solution without the errors. Now our secret is a secret. There's one more layer to this problem. The whole thing happens mod a large number. That means we count in a circle, like a clock. I'm not going to explain the details of modular arithmetic here. It's quite common in cryptography. And there are some links in the description to great primers. We'll do everything mod 89, which transforms our equations like this. So we have a hard math problem, discovering the real solution to an error-filled system of linear equations. And this math problem can be used as the basis for a public key cryptography system. Alice has some secret information, a vector, and there's some public information, the error containing equations. How can Bob use this setup to send an encrypted message? Let's try to send the simplest type of encrypted message, just one bit, either a zero or one. First, Bob grabs a bunch of these equations, the public information. I'm going to write them out, separating the errors from the original equations. Now, he adds them to create one new equation. Remember, all the addition is happening mod 89. If we ignore the errors, Alice's secret vector was a solution to each of the equations that we added together. So it's also a solution to the new equation, the one we got from adding the others. Now, 
If Bob wants to send the encrypted message zero, then he simply sends this final equation, including the errors. Remember, Bob only has the public information, so he can't pull apart the errors. If Bob wants to send the encrypted message 1, then he sends the final equation, but he adds 44 to the right-hand side. That's half of 89, our modulus, rounded down, which gives us 63 for the right side. So to send 0, we add 0, and to send 1, we add 44. It's kind of funny to think of an entire equation encoding either 0 or 1, but that's what's happening here. Let's try it again. Here's a new message that Bob sent to Alice. Does the equation represent 0 or 1? To find out, you need to separate the encoded bit from the actual solution, with the errors. For Alice, it's easy to figure this out. She plugs in her secret vector into the left side of the equation. This gives her the correct right side of the equation. Then she just subtracts that from the right side of the equation to get the encoded bit. Remember, the encoded bit should be either 0 or 44, but we got 2. Not exactly 0, but it's pretty close. That's because there's still an error in there. That's why we encoded 0 as 0 and 1 as 44. In modular arithmetic, mod 89, 44 is the furthest number from 0. The error shifts the dial a little bit, but Alice should still be able to tell the difference between something encoded near 0 and near 44. Alice could easily separate the actual solution from the encoded bit, but an eavesdropper couldn't. Remember, it's very hard for someone to discover the secret vector using just the public information, and without the secret vector, there's really no way of knowing what the actual solution is and separating it out. So Bob was able to use this equation to encrypt either a 0 or 1 in such a way that only Alice could reasonably detect which one it is. Bob only sent one bit, a 0 or 1, but he could build up from there, for example, sending over enough information for Alice and Bob to develop a shared secret key. The learning with errors problem is kind of a foundation for many different cryptographic schemes. There's a seemingly endless number of ways to modify and build on it. In a previous video, we discussed the NIST post-quantum standardization process. Kyber, the selected key encapsulation method, uses a variant of learning with errors. Several other selected algorithms, signature algorithms, use different problems, but they're within the same family as learning with errors. They're all lattice-based algorithms. But wait, you might be thinking, you haven't mentioned lattices at all. What do they have to do with learning with errors? Well, as we discussed in the last video, there are a collection of lattice problems, questions about these dot patterns, that researchers believe are very hard to solve. That makes them good for cryptography. Researchers would like to be equally confident that the learning with errors problem is hard to solve, hence making it also good for cryptography. How do they do that? Basically, by reframing the learning with errors problem as a lattice problem. Here's kind of an example of what I mean. It's only the rough idea. Details are in the description. We can imagine that the correct right side of the equations, without the errors, is encoded as a lattice point, the yellow one. But when you incorporate the errors, you get something shifted off the lattice, the green dot. So, if you can find the closest lattice point from the point with errors, then you know the correct right side of the equations. And then you just have to solve the learning without errors problem, which is pretty easy. But, as you may remember from the last video, it's very hard to find nearby points that are on the lattice. There are several specific formulations of this general principle, but that's the rough idea. Finding close lattice points is hard. Because learning with errors and lattice problems can be reframed in terms of each other, we assume that the learning with errors problem is also hard to solve. Therefore, learning with errors is a secure basis for cryptography. This video is sponsored by WIRE, secure messaging, file sharing, and video conferences, all protected with end-to-end -end encryption. Go to wire.com, W-I-R-E.com, for more information.